Um, so my first question is kind of an obvious one. It's just to tell me a little bit about yourself and your background. And I know that your dad was an artist and right. a sign maker. Uh -huh. um, so I guess, were you always drawn to the arts? Was it part of your upbringing, you know? It was having it available to me to look at. There was a time when my father and a friend of his were going to do a cartoon mm -hmm. and, and try to submit it. And I remember my father working on a clay sketch of it. And so it was a, a full-size bust head of the hero of the comic strip so that he could draw it from different angles. He, he was able to draw the body and everything in mm -hmm. all different ways. So just watching that progress, I was probably eight or nine years old, something like that. Mm -hmm. And my sister and I were very fascinated with what he was doing. It was it was real joy. My sister liked bedtime stories. She was a little younger than me. She's mm -hmm. four years younger. And my father loved telling stories. Mm -hmm. And her favorite story was about knights of the round table, Ooh, uh, medieval that. times. Yeah. yeah, And she was just thrilled by it. And so the hero of my father's stories was always out to slay the dragon. Mm -hmm. He would tell a story. Sometimes he would tell the stories. And my mother would come in and say, Sam, the kids are asleep. Well, I got to find out how the story ended. My sister insisted that the next dragon have more heads. <laughs> so at finally, at finally some point, we had a, a dragon with three heads. Uh, and my father did a, a large watercolor of the scene. Awesome. So there was a castle in the distance with little those little flags flying. A knight was coming down the road, and there was a dragon behind. A wow. hill on the right with three heads. And mm -hmm. There weren't many opportunities to see fine art in Arkansas at the time. There right. weren't any galleries uh, like this. And uh, we had the Arkansas Art Center, which had uh, a fairly good permanent collection. And my father would take me there from time to time, and, mm -hmm. and it, was, it was great fun. But I would say my father was my biggest influence. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, my next question um, is kind of like how you came to decide that you wanted to pursue the arts professionally. I never knew for sure mm -hmm. uh, until I was probably 30 years yeah. old that, that I would try to make a career of it because there were so little options early on mm -hmm. in the 60s when I was painting seriously. Uh, we had some competitive shows in the area. We had the Memphis at the Brooks Museum there had uh, the Mid-South show and the Arkansas Art Center in Little Rock had the Delta show. That was the thing that every artist was looking forward to. So that was our only chance to see our art on really nice walls. Yeah. And the other were just in the studio. So mm -hmm. I sure like having the show here at Mason, you know, because you've got such great white walls got and a lot I'm able of space. to. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the, even the large venues uh, don't have as much room to back up, but right. th that's almost 100 yards away. You yeah. know? <laughs> it's awesome to be able to see like every single thing. I know, painting. I know. Yeah. It's fantastic. And I love that you have this whole area. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about this current body of work. What inspired it? Kind of what you sort of about your process and your inspiration when you approach a well painting. yeah I don't wait for inspiration mm -hmm. it's it's something that I think it was Picasso that I may have even said something in that short video yeah, that I, I have think, I think yeah you did. That's where you yeah that that one uh, that one meant a lot to me it was uh, inspiration is a good thing but it better find you working when it comes I love that yeah and the muses when the muse comes you you want to be in that Ready in that, yeah, it. right. You never so, know. Yeah, yeah. I think this body of work is not that much different from what I do. I, you know, I'm not able to see the differences as well as other people. So when I'm doing something new in the studio, I guess I'm trying to be surprised by the work. Mm -hmm. I want it to not look derivative of myself, yet they still do. People can say, oh, I, I can notice your work anywhere but mm -hmm. to me the the subtle differences uh, are something that mean a lot to me mm -hmm. and it might be a spur on to a whole nother 
thing, but if you look at my catalog from the 60s on, you can find the similarity yeah. in the work. Mm -hmm. And the body of work that, that I'm doing here does seem to be fairly cohesive, which, which is cool. Sometimes my work is, is not, so yeah. that it, someone might come in and say, who are all these different artists? Right. At, at some of my shows, but uh, this one, they're pretty, you know, in a way, they're they're kind of the same theme. Like if I were one of those artists that said, I'm into my doodah period, yeah. you know, <laughs> these, these you can tell, are doodah. Yeah. <laughs> so, That's their official. Yeah, so. Their doodah period. <laughs> right. Uh, know so much what's going into this, on in the studio. It's more organic. Yeah, and it's right. not, it's all pretty much day in and day out. Mm -hmm. Some days feel better. It's a, it's always a bit of a struggle mm -hmm. and you're hoping that the, the muse will come in and light on your shoulder and, and direct your arm. But almost every painting that I do, and this has probably been in the last 10 years, almost takes 30 days for me to know when a painting is finished. If I'm working and I don't lose myself, that's, that's kind of key. It's, mm -hmm. and when I was younger, that would frustrate me. I would go, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? Right. Uh, now, it's like joyous. Mm -hmm. I'm going, oh boy, now is the time. I've been struggling with this thing for a whole week. Yeah. And now, I just I maybe turn it over, turn it upside down, mm -hmm. uh, run a solvent wash over it, and I start scrubbing things, and I start putting paint in other places, and things suggest themselves to me. And those are the most fun that I have where I'm yeah. just totally it's it's like the painting is coming through me and I'm just uh, right. you're you know. kind of experimenting and then it sort of yeah. tells you like this right. feels right. Right. I love that. So how I'm always sort of interested in this when it comes to abstract expressionists, but how how do you know when you a painting is finished? How how do you what do you say like okay I'm done here. Well, it takes a little while, but it feels like it is gelled. There's a bit of communication that I feel with the painting, that I'm able to receive something from the painting that is somewhat surprising, maybe has some sort of a hook, and, and I can't explain what a hook is, mm -hmm. but there's something in the painting that is sort of ties it all together, so it's a little different for every painting. A lot of people ask that of abstract painters, mm -hmm. and Richard Diebenkorn said that when the hairs on the back of his neck stood on end, uh, some painters say, when it blows me across the room, I know it's finished. Probably all of those fit every abstract painter yeah. at one time or another. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes the armature of a painting has to be just right. Yeah. So I don't do the, the overall where you just start a painting and the whole painting becomes one view mm -hmm. where you have to look at it where my paintings tend to have an armature, whether it's architectonic or, right. or whether it's just has the feeling of an interior or an exterior uh, landscape. Sometimes I feel that there's a figurative feel to it and I feel that well after the painting is finished. I don't, if I see something that like, I will wipe it out right? because mm -hmm. it, it will just, I mean I'll see it every time I come to the canvas. Right. Okay, thank oh, well, you. Yeah. yeah that's all I got. <laughs>